So for anyone who doesn't know the story of myself, Toft and Edwards Menagerie, um, Toft is 16 years old, so much um, older than Edwards Menagerie. And before I learned this double crochet stitch, we specialised in knitting kits. So um, hats and scarves and all the kind of great kits that we still do today for you to wear, but all knitted, not crocheted. When I was nine months pregnant, I decided I wasn't going to go to work anymore because I was nervous that I was never going to actually have the baby. Um, and so I sat down and I got bored after about an hour. I decided to watch a YouTube video and learn the double crochet stitch. And by the end of that day, so I think that was probably about 10 a.m., by the end of that day, I had made the very first Bridget the Elephant. Now, it did not look like this. It was inside out, it was lumpy. Um, I, <laughs> I, I used lots of different yarns, and obviously I was a beginner, so the stitches and my stitch count wasn't perfect. But what came off my hook that day, um, and what I kind of lit in me was a real passion for creating 3D shape using this spiraling, um, double crochet stitch. So I made Bridget the Elephant um, 10 years ago, almost to the day, um, which is very, very exciting. So to mark that, what I'm giving you in this video is actually a hack to that pattern to create Albus, the African elephant. So Bridget is an absolute favourite. She'd still be my go-to if crocheting um, for a baby present. But I think my style of crochet has become a lot more realistic um, since I've obviously mastered lots and lots of different techniques over those last 10 years. So all you need to be able to make Albus the elephant is a copy of the original Edwards Menagerie book or a Bridget the Elephant kit that you might have bought at some point over over the last 10 years. The rest of the pattern to turn Bridget into Albus is included in this video and then all the techniques um, that go with that as well. So the tusks are actually built in, you're doing splitting of the rounds there, so it's a little bit more challenging, it's got lovely details in it. I really hope you enjoy um, making Albus to celebrate 10 years of me mastering the double crochet stitch. It certainly changed my life um, and I think has done to lots of other people along the way too, the fact that I sat down um, on that day 10 years ago and crochet the first few stitches that then went on to become Edwards Menagerie. So this is a video that celebrates 10 years since I actually first learned the double crochet stitch. And what I'm going to do is a little bit of treat for us all is give you a hack for turning Bridget the Elephant, which was the first thing that I ever crocheted, and with the pattern of which is in the original Edwards Menagerie book. It's also been available as a kit for nearly 10 years. So this will be a hack to turn your Bridget the Elephant into the brand new Albus the African Elephant. So this is obviously complete with tusks, a different shape ear, um, and I'll give you everything, including all the pattern for the head and the ears in here to be able to turn your Bridget into an Albus so you can make Bridget a friend. Now, um, before you begin, once you've got your pattern for Bridget, you need to make the body, all the legs, and the back of the head up to round 15, exactly the same. The tail will also be identical as well. So all I'm going to give you here is the rest of the head pattern and the ear and tusk patterns to finish it off. So you're going to make Bridget's body, Bridget's legs um, to begin with. And then you're going to make the back of her head up to round 15. So you carry on with Bridget's pattern up to round 15, but the round that I'm going to demonstrate here is going to be round 18. We're just going to flash the pattern up now so that you've got the whole pattern of the head so you can screenshot that um, as you continue on the rest of it. Right, so what we're going to do is we've finished round 18 and now we're going to split off to create the tusks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you count 10 stitches backwards from where you are. So just to show that again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then what you're going to do, bring that 10th stitch close to where your last one is that you worked on the end of that round. That is my stitch marker there that show me that that's the end of my round. And then I'm going to double crochet these 10 stitches. So you go straight into that one, crossing the round and going back into the right side of the fabric. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 and then all you need to do is snip off that end 
and we'll sew that in afterwards. And that's where one tusk will go. Then what you're going to do is actually leave 10 stitches across the top and 10 stitches across the bottom. And then we're going to be rejoining to create another tusk over here that will then work to do that. So if you count your 10 across the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What we will do is go into that one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then you can break yarn. But before I do that, I'm just going to put my hook back into that first one there. So the first one that I rejoined on like that and slip stitch in there because that's then ready and finished for a next tusk to go in. So what you've done is you've created two either side like that for your tusk to sit in and you'll have 10 stitches spare on the on the top and 10 stitches spare on the bottom. Now what you need to do now is rejoin here and then you'll continue working the rest of the pattern that puts that trunk on. Now, as a right-handed person, I will always rejoin on this side, on top of that tusk. As a left-handed person, you're going to be going the other way around that spiral. So you'd be rejoining here if you're a left-handed person. But as a right-handed person, you want to be rejoining to work this stitch first to carry on and work the rest of your trunk. So what that means is you rejoin here. And then you've done one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten across the top. And then jump to the other side of that split and do your ten across the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then you go back across to the other side where you'll then continue to work those stitches. So you'll be going into that one and you're going to do two rounds to begin with before you carry on. So two rounds on those 20 stitches before you then carry on with the shaping attached to that trunk. Right. So I'm working on a chunky yarn here on an eight millimeter hook, which will make an absolutely beautifully huge Albus the elephant. I'm now going to swap back to one that I've already made in our Aaron. So this one here, is in our double knit yarn. So our standard size using a three millimeter hook. This next one is actually in an Aran. So let me just get the head so you can see the equivalent size. That there is it worked in an Aran, whereas that is in a chunky. So this is on a five millimeter hook. This one is on an eight millimeter hook. And that's the scale that it increases by as you go up those hook sizes. Exactly the same pattern, just increasing the thickness of the yarn and a matching hook that coordinates that. So you've made all of your parts following the head pattern and the tusk pattern. So now let's sew them together and do some finishing. So as I've said previously, your legs and your body are exactly the same as Bridget the Elephant, which can be found in the Edwards Menagerie book. And so what you want to do is stuff the ends of the feet only. I'm using a polyester stuffing here, um, but you can obviously use a pure wool or whatever you prefer. This is a recycled polyester stuffing, actually. Um, that's, I think, what's incredible since I did learn to crochet 10 years ago is how much things like that have changed, um, that that is something that I probably very much would have struggled with. In fact, the like struggled to source, whereas the first one that I made was actually made from an old pillow, the stuffing from inside an old pillow. I was that desperate in my, my excitement of having crocheted my first ever 3D shape to get, to get the stuffing in. So stuff the feet only. like that stuff the body obviously and then stuff the head and you might you could have stuffed as you've gone along but as you can see i'm stuffing all of mine at the end and i'm going to take advantage of these little tusk holes to put the stuffing in
and I've left all my tracking stitch markers in. Um, so this is something that I've done from the very beginning. It's always used a tracking stitch marker rather than a um, stitch marker that you put in and then you remove. And that's so it's nice and easy to see where my round starts track backwards. So what that is there that you can see that white line that runs down the head is the beginning and end of all of my rounds as I work in that spiral. So I've got a nice bit of stuffing in there, a little bit more just to fill out this bottom bit. There we go. And then what you can do is you can just pull that stitch marker out at the end. So if you are using that technique, you can just remove them at the end. In the same way, this is my body that's got that tracking stick, stitch marker in as well. And when I'm stuffing, I try and keep the stuffing in one piece as much as possible. So as you've probably noticed, I don't um, pull off small bits and push it through. I try and keep it into large, open bits of stuffing so that you don't get lumps and bumps inside your finished make. So push it in like that. And the marker that I've got in there, that marks the centre of the tummy. So that's something that's been quite new, that when I did the original Edwards Menagerie Animals and I learnt to crochet, that wasn't something that was on my radar. But we will confirm that in your pattern too, so you'll be able to see that on here. So just to confirm what this is, that my stitch marker that's sitting in here, is this is what I call a centralizer now, which is a stitch marker that I'll put in, a removable stitch marker that I'll put in as I am crocheting in order to mark the center of the tummy. So you want that in the second decrease of round 13. If you're using the original Edwards Menagerie um, standard form in order to, to create the body, that was something that I hadn't even thought about um, 10 years ago at all, but it can be very handy when you're doing sewing up because you just leave it in there marking of the center of the tummy so that you can then sew all your parts on straight. So gather the top of the head and then take this new head. It's quite obvious to see with these tusk marks where your top and your bottom is. So you should have no issue there on this one. So line that up with the center of the tummy. Pick a stitch underneath the head like that. Turn it around and then sew all the way around between the body and the head. And sew all the way around between the body and the head. And he will have a rather heavy head because of these large ears on either side. So uh, don't skimp on the stitches when you're doing this bit. You can always reinforce them at the end anyway, but don't skimp. Make sure you've got plenty of stitches to support holding those ears up. So I'm going to go underneath and put a few more in here. There we go. And to tidy off an end, I will just sew in and through. Do one last one there. And around a stitch. So in those 10 years, nothing has changed about the order in which I sew up. It's still the same, but I attach the body onto my head first. Then I put the two front legs or arms into position next, sewing them into the neckline. So I take the leg like that, crochet or sew it close, whatever you find easiest. And then position this right into that neckline and over sew. And then do exactly the same on the other side.
right, then the bottom legs. And what's key to your elephant sitting up nicely is the position of these bottom legs. So draw a line like that from your central point down to your central circle and then the, divide this bottom circle into thirds. So you'd have a line there that comes down from your centralizer, one there and one there. And you actually sew these legs on the line that divides the bottom into thirds. So once you've sewn one side, flip it and put the other side in. So once you've got your legs sewn into position, put in any ends that you've got when splitting off these um, trunk, uh, these tusks, should I say, by just sewing through. You can also close up any gap that you might have got there where you've done that splitting of round. So sew in that end like that. And again, secure that back through the head. Then when it comes to the tip of the trunk, we're going to do almost the same technique, um, same as it was for Bridget, but hold that trunk nice and level. So you've got your two tusk um, pieces there. Hold that trunk nice and level and just close it up by sewing in between those two rounds. So I've tucked that end in like that, back down and do that one just across. Now it's time to sew on our ears. So you've made two of these kind of classic African elephant shaped ears. And they have got the, they're both the same. So they're in reverse, but you've got that shape there. So you've got a straighter line up that side and you see you've got that decreasing shape there. That's the way that they're going to be going on is at that angle there. Now I haven't left myself a very long end on these. So actually what I'm going to do is gather these and sew these in. And then I'll actually rejoin an end to be able to sew them up on the head. This one's got a nice long end on. So if you've got a nice long end on when you finish making that ear, you can do it in one go. So gather the stitches like that. And then it's, we're going to need to sew it from the top downwards. So come up through the ear on the inside till you get your yarn to the point where we first want to sew it on. So I'm just gonna go through like that. And then I'm going to come down from the top. So I'm going to position this. Again, that curve, the straighter line is to the head and it's the big decrease line that you can see that goes on the outside. Put that into place and then over sew in exactly the same way between the ear and the head in the way that we joined the legs on. So sew like that. I'm going to do 10 stitches down the back of that ear. This, the kind of guide to sewing up, it is quite approximate. It's going to depend on how confident you are with sewing up. So don't take that as absolute rule that you have to have 10 stitches. Do what you think looks best as you're sewing up. So I've come up to the top again here and I've come back up. And all I'm going to do is do the same thing down the other side. So I'm going to come a little bit of a stitch forward there. And then just sew that down the other side. So I know that it's really firmly attached. There's no way that this ear can ever come off at a later date. So once you've got your two ears into position, I would snip off all of your ends because it's time for some finishing touches when we add on the tusks and a few lines of detail across that elephant's trunk using some slip stitch traverses. 
Then when it comes to the tusks, um, stuff the tusk like that from the wider end downwards and then sew in the end because we're actually going to use the mushroom, mushroom yarn that we're going to rejoin in order to secure it into position rather than using the cream. So sew in that end like that and then we'll just tuck those couple of ends inside the head of the elephant. So you can tuck those ends up into the inside of the elephant's head or you can just cut them off if you wish because what you're going to do is you should have a curve created by the decrease to see how you'll have a natural curve on that tusk like that. You want to put that inside these openings that we've left on either side of the trunk. So you're putting the cream bit into the hole like that. And then all you need to do to secure that into place is use your mushroom yarn. This will make it much neater than using your cream end. So take a length of mushroom yarn. You could have used one of the ends on your head if you had a nice long one, but I know that some of you um, won't necessarily leave them on quite as long as I did there. So I'll rejoin it so you can see it. So if I was gonna rejoin one, I'd bring my mushroom yarn in here like that till it disappears, go round a stitch, and then I'm gonna sew all the way around to make sure it's really nicely attached in there. And I'm sewing in through the cream tusk underneath and then out through those mushroom stitches. So all the way round. Like that. and then secure, secure off the end in the same way as normal. So once all that is in place, it's time for a couple of finishing touches. Let's get rid of another end there. So first, I would recommend putting your eyes in. And the eyes are quite low down this head if you take a good look at Albus here. Um, so your eye, you want to be putting in around there. I'm using a double knit yarn in an over dyed black. So I'm just going to go through and I've, I've threaded up two strands because I'm doing Aran. It's actually a double knit yarn that I'm using. So I'm using it as if it were an Aran by doubling those strands up. Then across here, and I use always use the rounds to check that I'm in line on about the right round. Um, obviously take a step back and have a look at it as well. So I've done that side. And with this one, what I've decided to do is actually finish with some nice eyebrows. Well, eyelids actually, I think probably rather than eyebrows, just slightly hooded lids. So use an end that you've got from snipping off. If you've got some left, that's all you'll need is a short end like that. And I've come in and through and then done a few wraps diagonally down like that. First did this one on this kind of technique on Hope the Whale. Haven't done it very often adding the um, hooded lids like that, but it's a lovely technique that you could decide to add to all your animals um, should you wish. It just gives a little bit of detail in the eyes. So that one there. Now my end was a tad short there, but I can still just about make it. There we go, and out the other side on the length. So the last feature, obviously do the tail. The tail is the same as Bridget's. Um, so I'm not gonna demonstrate the tail. That is exactly the same as Bridget's, the elephant. So you're doing that big chain start. There is a separate video for that, should you wish to see it. But to do the lines across the trunk, we're gonna work some slip stitch traverses across. So use the same size hook as you've used to make your actual elephant and then use the same yarn that you've used to do your elephant as well. And all I'm going to do is pop my hook in like that slip stitch and I just travel across that round of stitches one two three four five and six on the top one so that's the longest one you can snip that off and then you sew those ends in so that sits like that then go down onto a couple of rounds down and do the same thing again. And as your trunk gets narrower, you're just going to do fewer slip stitches. So like 
like that. Down again. And all you do is then sew in your ends neatly afterwards. So that's everything you need. We're going to put the pattern up here again now for a hack on the head. So just to emphasize, you're going to need the Bridget the Elephant standard form um, from the original Edwards Menagerie book in order to get your body and your legs and the back of that head. And then what you've got here is a hack in order to turn Bridget into Albus the African Elephant by putting on these magnificent tusks and those big African ears. So one, two, three. So you carry on, you've done your six, two fives and a four stitch slip stitch traverse. And all you need to do is sew in all those remaining ends and your Albus the Elephant is complete. I really hope you've enjoyed um, this free pattern hack for um, creating Albus the Elephant. Please do let us know if you enjoy making it in the comments.